I'd like to say hello and welcome to everybody. For uh, we're here in uh, Parky Rin for the replay of the county junior final between Rock Chapel and Kilmore. And uh, here, my my two studio analysts again is uh, Jerry Mahoney here and uh, Joe Collins. Um, Jerry, first of all, what are your thoughts on on uh, today? Uh, or was was the match left? Could we have left it there the last day? Or how do you feel about it? And um, well. Well, yeah, of course we, we left it after a bit the last day, but you know what? It was more relieved when it was all over the last day. Um, to the, to the, you know, it's another game. Uh, they deserve to be here as much as we do. They, they des- you know, it was it was a fa- it was a fair enough result. The, uh, like having watched the video last night, um, it's it's all we're. I think we're better footballers. We have a better team. Uh, it's how how we deal with the way with when they bunched our defence and they tightened up on us we couldn't we couldn't we couldn't react we couldn't adopt and if we don't adopt today they'll beat us simple as that uh, the last day I said centre field was critical centre field was brilliant the last day they, they, they did exactly what we wanted them to do we got 50 maybe 60 percent of the possession we didn't use it and if we don't if we can't adopt in our forward line today to being more more creative we lose one thing that was a factor the last day, and we, we kind of, uh, I think we didn't realise it, being up here in the stand, we were sheltered, but the breeze was a big factor the last day. Um, looking there today, Joe, um, the, the breeze seems to be blowing uh, diagonally um, up towards the uh, Mosgrave Park corner there today. How, how do you see the, the breeze being influenced today? It's not even have to say. It seems to be a swelling type of breeze. Yeah, it does appear to be blowing that way, but not long will the breeze be. But I think even the ground conditions again, they have obviously got even worse than they were the last day. So there's a possibility that that's going to play a big influence on the game as well because I think you'll have a slower, maybe a more slog of a game today than the last day. And that might or might not suit us. It might suit Kilmory a little bit more. Yeah, I see there was massive pools of water there. I'd say it made a lot of heavy rain here in the last uh, 24 hours or so, and uh, there was a lot of slipping and sliding there the last day. And uh, I'd say it could be it, there could be a lot, a lot more of that today. Um, Joe, you were pleased with uh, midfield's performance the last day, but uh, that James White played a power ball as well in the middle of the field the last day for them. As I said to Scruffy there a while ago, where was he when we needed him? Yeah. Uh, he was the guy that so- soloed down the field a few times. We need to, we need to stop that. That's, that's, he, it, not that it was that they scored scores every time we went down, but it's demoralising for for a, a, a for a team, but certainly for a backline to see a guy. Uh, he 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 soloed past our two midfields, our two midfielders on one occasion, and that's not on. You cannot do that. And as, as I said, we, uh, that needs to be stopped. Yeah. As far as I know, Rock Chapel have made a few switches. I think um, I think Liam Collins has gone to the corner, and uh, Daniel Curtin has gone centre forward, and uh, and Seamus Hickey might be gone out to wing forward. Would you say that would be an influential move, Joe? It might, uh, but it's something we have to watch during the game because I think uh, during the, the we stopped it very well the last day. We stopped it very well in the first 15 minutes, and we seem to be doing a lot of passing of the ball. Then we got very much bottled up when they got the hand. They figured this out. They, they bottled us up completely, and we didn't come up with Plan B. And we have to be prepared for Plan B. Today. And I think that might mean the chairman has to be moved around a, bit, a little bit because he is winning a lot of ball, but we need to get more distribution of that ball around the rest of the forwards. And maybe the, the shuffling up of the forward line has to, or will have that effect. But I think that it's something that's going to even change as the game goes on, I would expect. Yeah, we seem to get bottled up a lot the last day, trying to carry the ball against the breeze, and uh, hopefully that won't happen um, today. Uh, I noticed that they have uh, a switch in their team as well. Their their wing forward Dominic Creedon has immigrated since uh, to San Francisco. So there's a guy that came on the last day, Pat O'Sullivan, the starting their wing forward, a big strong fellow, if I remember rightly. I think. I I, I thought that, that is he Dan O'Halloran and what's his name? Dave Dave O'Halloran had a super game the last day. Like not that you know Kevin never left him get through. Kevin always was a right cute enough, but he handled a pile of ball and he was. He was stuck on everything from their half back line down to the down to their full forward line. He was, so I, I think uh, he'd want to be quietened early on in the first five minutes, maybe just to take the wind out of him. Yeah, I'd say winning the toss could make a major call in this actually because if uh, would say would you elect to play with the wind in the first half uh, on a day like today? 
Well, I wouldn't anyway. Uh, it takes a while to settle down. Yeah, I, I wouldn't either. I, I prefer to settle down. I, I think it, playing with the wind at the start it puts a bit of pressure on you because you are expected to do well. And then if you haven't, if it's a tight game, you're at level at half time. It's there in the back of your mind. Whereas if it's a tight game and you've held it against the wind, it's a huge psychological advantage to go out in the second half. Like you know, so that's just my feeling on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just uh, I think they're just calling out the team, so we'll we'll take our positions here and we'll uh, get ready. Ross Chapel are just after coming out there now for their team pitcher. Um, the other news from the Kilmory camp we'll have to keep an eye on him here is that uh, Pat O'Callaghan, their goalkeeper, went off injured with a quad muscle the last day, and uh, there's there's a doubt about him, and that seems to be the sub keeper inside there, who's uh, Jason McDonald, and uh, Joe. You're a man that has uh, about 25 odd years of goalkeeping experience under your belt there. Would you say that that could be uh, influential today? It could be because, like, I mean, I don't care. Any team, like, if you're playing with a goalkeeper for long enough and, and you do make a change, it's bound to upset the thing. And I, all right, they might have two weeks to prepare. It, maybe in, in the knowledge that he might be able to play for them, but you still can't prepare like that in two weeks because when the pressure will come on, people will, will, will it'll be there in the back of their minds as well. It'll be a bit of a worry. So, it might be something that we could do something about maybe a few high balls in because he's not particularly very big. Well, he's definitely not as tall as Pat O'Callaghan, and uh, his kick out I didn't think was quite as. Uh, well, as long either. It tw- wasn't that his kickouts were bad, but they, they just did, he did, just didn't seem to be making contact with his his centre field and halfbacks. They didn't seem to expect or to know where to expect the, the, it to drop. And uh, I thought from the time, from the my impression of it was that when he came on, that uh, the kickouts that were taken from there on, we seemed to actually get the, the greater majority of them in that in that particular part of the game. No, maybe it was down to him. Maybe it was just down to the way our boys were starting to to play at the time. Um, what's great news from the Rock uh, Camp is that Willem Murphy is back togged out and might possibly be able to play a part today. We just watch him kicking a few balls inside there now and he has his uh, knee fairly heavily strapped. He damaged his, um, I think it was a lateral ligament, his medial ligament there in the Duhalla final, wasn't it? Was it after Duhalla final? Yeah, semi-final. Sorry, semi-final actually, the drawn match against Cullen, or the replay against Cullen, yeah. And oh, it was actually that was the game, and uh, yeah, he was supposed to be out for. And thankfully, he didn't need an operation, and he's done a lot of weights in it since. And uh, I, I'd, I'd say there'd be no man more worthy of a of a run out. Well, but I can hear he's, about, he's about two weeks in full fitness, but I mean, he, uh, ten minutes or fifteen minutes would give us a huge pull today if they if they needed to gamble at some particular point in the game. I I wouldn't take a chance on him if we if we were going okay because I I, I wouldn't ask anyone to, to put their do you not know, risk it. But if we were going, uh, if it was uh, the last throw of the dice with 10 minutes to go or something like that, he would be a very, very uh, uh, good substitution. See, John Callan is in there. John didn't do, um, John didn't do much training as well. He has a groin strain, and uh, I think he's hardly trained at all since the, the last game. But he has enough fitness built up, and I see him practicing a few drop kicks inside there. I'm sure <laughs> that'll have that. <laughs> That'll, that'll have a few of the supporters and the management <laughs> break you out in a cold sweat when they'll see it. Um, they're full forward. Uh, they're full forward line. I was t- talking to a Kilmory supporter the last day before the match, and he said that like their full back line, their full forward line were their two best lines on the field. But uh, the last day they took off James Kelleher very early in the second half. Was well, after ten minutes or fifteen minutes into the second half, just after he missed a kind of a goal chance. But he was. Um, him and uh, and uh, Greg Barrett lo- uh, looked dangerous the last in OEM and just about held Greg Barrett. But um, I, I, I'd, I'd worry, like, could he have a uh, bigger influence today? Yeah, we were wondering the last day, was he injured or something? Did, I don't know, did any of us hear whether he was or not? Because it, was, it seemed to be a crazy decision uh, to take him off. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they, I... I I, I thought Eamon had a great game in your men because he, he had all like he had he had four or five inches in them I'd say. Oh he's a he's a huge man, we're just looking at him again there now. He's got that big distinctive uh, sort of calf bandage or black bandage on his leg there, but he's a huge man. And uh like his Eamon is no small fellow himself and uh having a man like him inside that I even saw a picture in the paper there of uh, him and uh, goalkeeper Tony Collins uh just um, meeting a, a high ball together in the edge of the square, but like he had got to it as well, and uh, he's definitely a, a, a threat inside around there. I think, I think we need to threaten their goals today, as Joe was saying there, because that goalkeeper isn't isn't tall, and we need like 
the, 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 it was watching the game on, on the video it, it was crying out for let a few in let's see what they're like inside no the problem was our, our full forward line went inside because like, I, I suppose it was Seamus I didn't realise Seamus was even corner forward for the finish because he was always out here uh, but like like it was crying out for a few changes like that. Just let one in and see what, what how they'll deal with it. Yeah, we 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 got a goal against Cullen from uh, a, a ball like that across the square, and uh, I think definitely that goalkeeper. Right, we we spoke a lot about uh, their team actually, but uh, we'll say our, our our six backs are are there. There are six uh, fairly tenacious warriors inside there now, and they've been playing super ball here. What would be your thoughts on them? Yeah, they're very settled and they're very even. They, they, they work well together, all of them. Like you know, and, and uh, hopefully that will continue today. Like I, they had a good, solid game the last year. Every one of them had their periods where, where they worked, and they work well together. Like you know, they, they, they blend well together. Now, it's so just to be able to have the confidence to go I mean in the second last game here against Glenbower do you remember uh, Philip Murphy and, and Brendan had uh, had a couple of great raids up the field that day and took the pressure off the last day I thought Eamon Callan even when we were under pressure himself and Bat brought out a few balls and brought do you know started off initiated the attacks down the field if they can bring the ball so far that will give confidence to the fellas in the half back line to go a bit further the centre fielders and take the, the more we can press down the field puts pressure on the other team John Callaghan was reading a bit in the first half the last day, but then he shipped a heavy bang um, above around the 21 there, and uh, and it, it it kind of threw him off there. He, he got a bad a bad knock that time. Rockchapel just break you away from the bunch there now. So yeah, we're right on the dot of half time. We'll all our questions will be answered in a few minutes. One thing there, uh, their subs the last day they brought in some huge men. <laughs> they did one man bigger than the next, um, and one of them there was he number twenty three. He put all, he he cut probably one of the best points of the game. Was it? Do you remember what was his name? The, the, from over here in the oh Jesus! Big it wasn't that Pat O'Sullivan guy. Was it Pat O'Sullivan? Was it? Uh, Possibly the guy that's starting today at number ten. Yeah. Um, they, they, no, they, they, they and they, they changed quickly. Like there was, there was, they seemed they had three fellas on. Without. We have a big name refereeing us here today. We have. Uh, Michael Collins from Clannacilty, the inter-county referee. He's just doing a quick count there on... Just counting the players. And he blows the whistle and we're up and running as John Judy to Daniel Callaghan. Daniel plays a lovely ball in T in Guinea. But that's number two there. Is Liam Barrett and it's Kilmurray on the break. It's a low ball in there to Willem Buckley. Oh, it's just dropped there and it's uh, DJ Bond. DJ. Oh, it was a lucky there to, to win that ball back, but DJ has it again. Looking to pick out a pass. Gives it there to John Dudia. Oh, plays a great ball in there to Ian Ganeans after making the switch across the field. Shimmies. Gives it across there to John Forrest. John plays it out there to Liam Collins, but he just overmet that. And that's a uh, line ball just 30 yards out. Liam Collins, no chance of getting down. That's been kicked by uh, James White there, wearing number eight today. A big man in the middle of the field, played a ton of ball, but he kicks a desperate ball there, intercepted by Dinjo Callahan. Rock Chapel holding up the ball here. And Brendan Cahill has a go with the left leg. Oh, he miss, miss hit that completely. And that's the first wide of the game to Brendan. One minute and 22 seconds gone. Um, Rock Chapel are playing with the, the breeze here. Well, it's kind of going diagonally into the corner there where Ian Guinea is playing. Now, it would be good if a lot of balls was going to Ian, you would imagine. But... Uh, but I, I, I'd like to see them going a bit more direct. Yeah. We need to have someone sitting in the corner of the square all the time. Everybody was out there 21 yards. We need somebody sitting in the corner of the square. Yeah. No. Dinjo Callaghan goes up and breaks that down there, but it's won by Kilmurray. And that's out to David O'Leary. Looking up there. He's giving that ball in there. John Jonathan Buckley. He spills it. A lot of ball bobbling. I'd say this will be a factor in the game. That's James White picking up the dirty ball in the middle of the field. And... Uh, that's a free in there, right in the middle of the park. Free for a foul there on uh, Owen Creedon, who seems to be wearing a strapping on his toy. And that's out to their playmaker in chief there, O'Halloran. 
It's David O'Halloran twisting and turning. Great pressure there from Kevin Collins. And Kevin Carroll, I can see him protesting that that was no free over there on the line. David O'Halloran is looking up. This man plays a power ball, even though he didn't get any shots in the last day. James White slipping there. Looking for an option, skips past in Joe Callaghan, and the big man is breaking past John Callaghan. Gets in a shot with the left leg, oh, and that's barely, barely wide. Good drive through there, isn't it? Yeah, he's a he's a huge man. He's a huge man, and he's got a lot of football. Now we watched him shooting before the match. The last day, he kicked a few. Uh, Sort of wayward shots, uh, but uh, but that was that, that was his best attempt to date. Yeah. But What's your Tony? It's just the fact of him coming through. He, he, like if he looked around him even and picked out somebody, it's the fact that he's making ground through the middle. Yeah. That kick out just dropped short there. It's intercepted by Pat Sullivan, the sub. And uh, that time deemed to have overplayed it. Good tackling there by John Callahan. There's loads of space over here. All the players seem to be over converging on one side of the field. John Doody. Why is John Doody kicking that ball? Brennan Cahill. Oh, to John Callahan. And John. Oh, ball intercepted there by Barrett, cornerback. That's Liam Barrett on Liam Collins. Long ball in there from Liam Long. And that's Greg Barrett turning on the left leg there. And that goes wide again. So Rock Chapel, Rock Chapel, uh, after conceding two good chances there now to Kilmore. We did. So four minutes gone. Still no score on the on the board. Would you say Tony should be keeping that ball away from James White, Joe? Possibly, but uh, it's not even the biggest worry of it in catching the ball. It's when he gets the ball down on the ground when it's past him. So I, I think we're contesting well enough. Like it's just to stop his runs. Yeah. Kilmore on the break again here. That's cut out there by Philip Murphy. And I think they got tangled there with, with Brendan Cahill. Philip Murphy is holding his eye there. I don't know if he get a knock across it. That's number 15, William Buckley, is standing over this. About 40 yards out, he does have the breeze against him, but it's kind of sheltered down there because of the trees, so it wouldn't be. And he's just after reducing that down to about. Uh, he's after bringing that down to about 30 yards. Uh, and there she goes. First blood to Kilmurray. Five and a half minutes gone. And William Buckley puts Kilmore into the lead. Conditions are definitely slippery out there today, but Kilmore, this game has started uh, the opposite of last week, and that Kilmore seem to, to have started better. They have. Um, geez, we, we're, 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 we're just putting, not putting anything together. We're not handling the ball well. Um, we just have to get it direct. We have to get it down to our full forward line. Uh, ball breaks there by John Doody, and well done by John Doody there. And he was shouldered by David O'Halloran as he was going down the ball. Kevin Collins with the quick free. That's Daniel Corton turning there. Just spills the ball, but luckily it goes to John Callahan. John goes long into the space. Ian Guinea is out in front. Oh, Ian reads it well. Reads it very well. No, he's standing his man here looking for someone to give it to. Sells that left-legged dummy, throws it in there. That's Bat Corton a long way from home. Gives it back to DJ, back to Ian, chance to shoot here, oh that's dropping short and that's the first touch there for the subkeeper Jason McDonald. long ball out there to Jonathan Buckley oh and that ball just skips past William Buckley and Philip Murphy going down over the ball, or Philip leaves it go long Philip showing all his experience there Rock Chapel's most experienced player picks a super pass there to John Dudia and John breaking past the 65 Kilmurrier backing away Oh, very cleverly done there. Kilmurray all backed away. Nobody came to him. Clearing Donegal style football of just crowd the D and forced him into kick pa into fist passing. And that's Eamon Callan. Doesn't need to keep it in as it's a Rock Chapel ball. He's looking up. Dinjo is loose there. Will he pick him out? Oh, good ball there. Well, oh, Dinjo just spills that and wins it back again. Well done. Oh, 
just hesitated there and took the couple of steps. He was looking up and he didn't seem to see anything on. Michael Collins deemed that he, I suppose he possibly did just, just over to, I suppose the fact that this is an inter-county referee, he won't be, uh, and you know, he didn't fall it, but it looked, it just looked, the indecisiveness, they'll just blow for it because it's, it's yeah. the benefit of the doubt, he got it and he didn't take it. Yeah, they're used to fellas as being, being sort of clinical, making quick decisions on the ball, William Buckley and you're lining this up, this is a much more difficult for you know, this is definitely 40 yards out from post. Oh, he screws that away out to the right-hand side. Dangerous ball break, breaking in. And that's Pat Sullivan, I think. And Pat Marks is... Uh, no, he's, uh, he's um, number, the wing forward. He's the man that started instead of Dominic Creedon. Yes, Kilmurray definitely looking uh, more settled, have settled more early. Eight and a half minutes gone. Tony Collins looking to pick out a man that might win a ball in the middle of the field. Kevin Collins goes up and grabs this one. Then Joe Callahan going long this time. Again, ball broken away there by Liam Long. And it's Kilmurray on the break again. That's up to William Buckley. Kilmurray looking very lively so far. Seamus Hickey working hard there, tracking back. And that's out there to David O'Leary. He gives a long ball in, but Eamon Callan has read it superbly well. Oh, breaking out there. Well done by Eamon, who had a super game the last day. Brendan Cahill takes the free. Gives it out to Daniel Curtin with the left leg up the wing. 19-year-old Daniel, son of Sean Dan. John Forrest fighting hard there. And oh, Seamus Hickey breaks superbly onto the ball there. Well done by the big men. And he picks out Liam Collins. Oh, well, Liam Collins contests that ball well and is forced out there for a 45. Oh, Rock Chapel for the first time there now looking dangerous that time. And Tony Collins is coming up to, to kick this 45. He kicked one against Cullen. Kicked one against Mill Street in the Dohalla final. And they got a 45 in the exact same spot in the first half the last day, but because the breeze was against him, they didn't uh, elect to let him come up. But uh, he's got the breeze blowing, I'd say, directly uh, behind him now. It's, uh, it's still a big kick. Oh, it's still a big kick, no doubt about it. So 10 minutes gone, Rock Chapel looking to get on the board. No, he ne never, never got hold of that. Seamus Hickey wins it well. Oh, and he's blocked. And the chance goes a begging. That's O'Halloran coming away with the ball. James White inside him, but he elects not to give it to him. Gives it to Pat O'Sullivan. The big man stepping inside. Kicks it in with the left leg. That's James Kelleher inside. James had a quite day the last day. Oh, and just slipped past Bat Curtin there. And Bat was forced to attach the draw bar and bring him down William Buckley with his with his third scoring opportunity now he'll be hoping to do better than he did with the last one taking his time hasn't succeeded in stealing any yardage this time Completely lacking leadership. We have we've, we've absolutely played nothing yet. We've nothing done. Jesus, I, we just have to. Somebody has to grab hold of this. Oh yeah, he hangs that up and curls it in right over the centre of the crossbar. Three points. Three points to no score. No, it wouldn't be the score. The score wouldn't bother me. It's the fact that we're playing with a bit of a breeze, Joe, that would be uh, more worrying. More worrying. Oh, well, even the fact that we're not putting together, we're not stringing together the passes. We, we, uh, we've hit and hope a few ones there now. And some have worked out okay more by accident than anything else. But we need to steady down and start working ball. Yeah, they seem, seem to be picking up the majority of the breaks in the middle of the field. That's David O'Halloran again. And Eamon Callaghan superbly out again here, breaking up the middle. Can Eamon set up something here? Oh, 
Foul there by James White in the middle of the field and James White is going to see maybe a card for this. I say no he didn't, he just gave him a little warning. Ball chipped up there to Ian Guinea. Oh, and that's actually a Rock Chapel ball well spotted by the linesman there. Owen Barrett just got a, a touch on it there on one of the three Barrett brothers in the full back line. James Hickey coming in along the in line. Oh, I think it was just spilled out of his hand there. He just got he just got a shoulder as he was uh, looking to pass it across. And that's another chance gonna begging. We've had a couple of half chances. But we've fallen into the very same thing that we were doing the last day. We have to like we we getting blocked down there. Like we have to we have to start doing something different. We're doing but, the very but I think, nothing. I think this full back line are, are very very tight though and very sticky. You know, but we the start of the game. This is the time to be making the changes in what you're doing. Drag him out, whatever it is. Now, the big man going up in the middle of the field there, and again, three Rock Chapel men went up for that ball. John Callahan breaking up that. Rock Chapel need to do more of that. Well done by the big man. Plays the ball up there to John Forrest. John under pressure there, wins it well. Oh, gives a great ball into Liam Collins. He's got Seamus Hickey on his shoulder. Liam gets in the shot. Oh, and that just curls to the right and wide. DJ Bourne was just coming in at the end of it there, but I think it was more of a shot than a than a than a pass. But it's better, but I I I'd agree with Terry. Says something simple. We need to that when James Hickey was going above there, like all he had to do was there were there was about five players converging him. All he had to do was put the ball across and hope that somebody from the lock would come in on the other side. And if they they're starting to put a few passes together, if they can just steady down and do that and get their confidence going. I think it's the, it's the breaks off the middle of the field we need to be uh, focusing on though because three, you know, just one man up and the other stay down. Well done Daniel Curtin that time. Daniel Curtin wins the ball, looking up there now, oh, chips it out there to Ian Guinea. A lot of work to do now from out here though. Oh, picks a great ball across there to John Forrest. John is a man outside him. Um, gives it out to DJ. DJ looking to get in a shot, picks it, oh, trying to pass, uh, pass there to Daniel Curtin. Intercepted there by uh, Owen Barrett, Kilmurray coming away again, giving a long ball down. Philip Murphy just gets a boot to there, touches it down beautifully to DJ or to uh, Bernacal. Kevin Collins picks a great ball out, but Kilmurray are like Donegal. They've just got about six men packed back inside the D there, and they're not conceding uh, any any space to Rock Chapel. Going to be very hard to break this down. Surely. Uh, Yes, indeed, I thought that already. It was a high tackle there on Kevin and Kevin Collins up around his neck. And Rock Chapel have a chance here now to get on the board. A difficult enough. It's a, around 40 yards, I suppose, from goals. If, if we don't, if we can get this point and get a couple of more points, quite, we'll force them to stop doing that. We'll, st we'll force them to stop bunching it. Yes. The white flag goes up and Liam Collins has kicked... Rock Chapel onto the scoreboard. And that'll, that'll ease the nerves of the Rock Chapel supporters. Nearly 16 minutes gone before Rock Chapel got on the board, but they did have a few chances. But that was better there now. That last kick out there now was broken down by Dinjo, and Daniel Corton was waiting underneath it to snap the breaking ball. John Duty going up for this one. And Seamus Hickey breaks onto it again. I, Gets a good ball out there to Daniel Curtin. Oh, Daniel lines a peach of a ball over the bar from 40 yards. That's a super score by the young lad. Played all his football up to 18 with the bars just down the road here. Read that, read that shot absolutely perfection. Joe, that eases the pressure a bit. It is, but it was far more direct that time. I, all right, we did win the ball in the middle of the field, but he gave the pass quickly and the point was taken quickly. Straight through the middle instead of going out to the wings and, and allowing time for the backs to group. Yeah, breaks in the middle of the field are going to be crucial. Daniel Curtin goes up this time and Seamus Hickey again winning it. Cutting through the centre. Oh, the space opening up a small bit. Two hops there possibly. Oh, I think that was just the wrong side of the post. Yeah, and it's wave wise. Ah, oh, super move. Two solo to many. Two it was. Two yeah. He should have taken the fan 
Space open up there, read, read it really well. Yeah, Rockchapel are, are coming storming back into this game now, and they need to because I don't think they can afford to be uh, too many points behind here at half time. Even to, to look out there on the pitch, um, Kilmory seem to have acres of space uh, up, up front, whereas uh, Rockchapel, it's, it all seems to be bunched up front for them. Jason McDonald's kick out again. Daniel Corton goes high, a big man pulls it down. Kicks out Ingeni, he's making super use of the ball there today. Liam Collins gives it inside to Daniel Corton, but... Oh, oh Michael Collins just... Uh, yeah, I thought so too, that it was harsh. James White was falling there, and... He won the, won the free anyway, he got the benefit of the doubt from Michael Collins. Oh, that's a poor clearance kick there by... A, oh, no, was it Liam Barrett, I think, or... John Judy, giving it back to Seamus Hickey there. Uh, Michael Collins deemed that he was pulled or dragged there by uh, I think it was David O'Leary the foul was on the number 6 is this too far out for him? well no with the breeze no I think he'd make that with the breeze alright no he's got the breeze with him he can, he can make that alright you want Seamus in the square for this one it would be an advantage to have him in a position right for it he's about 40 yards and indeed Seamus is right where we want him to be right on the edge of the small square not allowed follows in from a free that. Sure, there was about. I know he has the distance, but when the when the ball is too far out for a forward like they're taking a free, they'll force it, and that's what Ian is doing there. He's just trying to force it a little bit too much. So another chance, another chance goes a begging. These, these chances, these chances are like gold dust. Yeah, you have to manage the chances. Maybe he was the wrong man to be taking that. Maybe again it could have been Tony coming down to take it. Anyway, Rock Chapel getting on top here now in the middle of the field. John Doody catching a great ball there. Works it in to Liam Collins. John Callahan gives it to Seamus Hickey. Seamus coming across. Gets in a super shot. What a score. I could see Jerry here. I could see Jerry calling on him to take the shot there. Jerry, you saw that coming? <laughs> no, I did not. Have <laughs> <laughs> That's a super score there by Seamus Hickey. So with 20 minutes, 20 minutes gone now, and Rock Chapel have re retaliated with three points in a row. This is, actually, this is actually better than the last day because we've started pulling and we've started to come into the game. This is the way to be. John Callahan going up there, breaking that ball down. That ball is just picked up there by number seven, Ian Murphy, and Brendan Cahill then just clattered into him there. I think it was an, it was an a accidental collision. I wouldn't be like Brendan to hit a dirty shot like that. That could be the influence of uh, watching Morris Mack playing football for Boston and his uncle when he was a young lad. He was Morris was known to be late with the odd shoulder so it's a free in there to Pat Sullivan standing over it there John Ca um, Kilmore has switched that um, so Pat Sullivan across and John Callan has followed him that's a testing ball dropping in there Eamon Callan just slipped and the ball breaks there to David O'Halloran no, and that's wide all the ways. A great diving, uh, a great diving block there by by Eamon Callan, putting him under pressure. Togs are absolutely destroyed with Mook Siskin. He'll be having palpitations after all her uh, her efforts washing the jerseys over the last 30 years. Tony Collins lining up another one. Rock Chapel supporters much more uh, much more happy now to be back in this game anyway, and uh, see their team picking up a bit. And they're starting to fire. Tony's kick out, dropping out again there. Broken on by David O'Halloran. Brennan Cahill breaks up the middle. That's a super ball skidding into John Forrest. On, I think that was Kevin Barrett. Just got a... Kevin, the youngest of the three brothers. Just got a boot to that. John Forrest looking up. There's no one showing for it. Chips it in there to Seamus Hickey. Well won by Seamus. Right out on the inline. Ball needs to be worked across. It's a 45, that's okay, it's a 45. Not, not like Rock Chapel, not to work the ball out from that position. 
Yeah, but I think I think you know Seamus turned in anyway. You know, so the, he, that's the way he took the play. And but, no, in fairness, he did try to pass it. But yeah, it's fine. I, I'm happy with that. He's still in position. And uh, Daniel Curtin, no, I've never seen Daniel kicking a, a free off the ground, but Daniel Curtin is lining this one up. Brendan Cahill needs to be careful now. Um, Absolutely. He uh, he's on a yellow. One 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 awkward. Ta- confident. No, it might be worth his while having the cut. Is it? Touch. Oh, great touch there by Seamus Hickey, but taken off the line by Barrett. And again, it's Kilmurray coming away with the ball there. <coughs> Pat Sullivan, Pat just half spills it there, but Bernard Cahill stands him up. Michael Collins uh, blew him there for two hops. Rock Chapel breaking away with the ball. Oh, Ian just hesitated there, but it's a Rock Chapel ball going in anyway. It was Liam Barrett just booted the ball there. Oh, it's a good ball. Oh, oh, John Forrest just uh, misread the flight of the ball there and slipped. And that's David O'Halloran coming away again. The centre forward dropping way, way back deep. Pat O'Sullivan looking up now. Kicking a long high ball in, but it, Eam- Eamon Callahan seems to be high. Oh, Eamon gets it right, but it's Greg Barrett. But Eamon still comes away with the ball. Liam Collins, John Dudia. John Dudia throws it up to Eamon. Eamon steps inside of Creedon. Oh, plays a peach of a ball into oh, Seamus, but it just hops. The hop just bit him. And I think that's Liam Long coming away with the ball there. His father is in the hospital above in Dublin recovering from a bad accident. From a farming accident a year ago. And that's James Royce. James breaking through the centre there. He's got O'Leary, David O'Leary on his shoulder. But oh, I was thinking that all right. That he was, he was, he was turned onto his wrong leg, and he's not a man for shooting with his right leg. I'd say. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's. That's his trademark. There, the, those runs through the centre, like, in a, you know, in that situation, it was a breaking ball, hard, to, hard to stop it. But like, we, we can't afford to let that be happening in the second half. Yeah, he's a, he's a hard man to stop when he goes forward. He's, he's a superman to beat the tackle. Yes, once he gets running, like he, is, he carries a great momentum with him. But they're not, they're not always using it. That's the one from our point of view is great because, I mean, he is making the breakthrough, but they're not using it to their advantage. And it's that man, Jim's who we were just talking about, kicking a long ball in there. And it's a, a sprint between Eamon Callaghan and Greg Barrett. Greg Barrett just in front and coming to the ball. And uh, Eamon, Eamon just bumping him there from behind. But still, it's a, it's a free kick right on the, on the 14 in the in line. Kilmurray now waiting because uh, the one place you don't want Greg Barrett is on the edge of the small square for this. He's such a tall man in there and he gets a, a hand to it. Son, son, oh, he made a complete mess of that altogether. He'd be very disappointed with that. And with 26 or 25 and a half minutes gone, three points each on the scoreboard. It looks like it's going to be another low-scoring game. A goal could be an instrumental draw today. It could, and that's just what I'm thinking. I'm looking up the other end of the field. The chairman Sikino is in it full forward. I think they should play him there for about five, ten minutes in both halves now. Because I think we're still coming out too far. I'm watching. They're, they're playing in and, and John Forrest inside, and they're coming too far out. Ginger Callan protesting there. He seemed to get dragged or pulled just as uh, he was about to make his run. But indeed, yeah, he definitely did too. I wouldn't say so, no, because it was the same as, uh, as uh, consistent, is what I'd call it. Oh, well read there by uh, Liam Barrett. Giving the job of picking up, uh, picking up uh, Ian Giddy. Great ball chipped in there to David Hallen, John Callaghan. Oh, superb defending there by John Callaghan. And Rock Chapel breaking away. Ball just clears Daniel's head. But oh, well, one there by uh, Liam Long. And that's all here. He drills it. Great ball in. Eamon Callaghan is having an absolute blinder for Rock Chapel in the backs today. Every ball they're kicking in, he's bringing it out. Daniel Corton. Daniel is making super use of the ball today. Chips a lovely pass there into space. Well done by Seamus Hickey. Taking on Kevin Bard, stepping inside. And that's come to Ian Guinea. Ian turns onto the left leg. 
And that's over the bar. And Rockchapel, from going from three points down, have retaliated with four points in a row. I, I think actually the, the the difference there is Daniel Cotton is playing really well there in, in centre forward. He's making super use of the ball today. That he's using the fast ball. He's not delaying with the ball today. He's letting it go fast. And we're, we're looking a bit more like the way we can play. Well, it gives the opportunity for us to win the ball closer to their goals rather than having the forwards coming out and coming out and coming out. No, that's McDonald's kick out there. John Callahan gets up and gets the touch to it in Rock Chapel win the break. It's John Forrest. Throws it into Seamus Hickey and Seamus turning and coming across the middle. Looking for a pass there. Throws it out to John Dude or to John Dude. Or is Dinjo Callahan, I think, actually. Oh and look at just wide because it, it the shot. Yeah. the shot. Yeah. It looked to, it looked to have a score on it for a lot of the fight. Rock Chapel supporters are sounding a lot more animated and uh, optimistic here now. They were very uh, down in the dumps. We were very down in the dumps after the first uh, 10 minutes when we were uh, not firing at all at all. Ginger Callahan getting up on this one. Ball breaks there, but David O'Leary wins the break. Looking for it's a, a race between J James White and John Doody, or John Callahan. White comes away at the ball, kicks a crazy ball across the middle to Brendan Cahill. John Doody, John looking up. Chips the ball into Seamus Hickey again. Seamus looked to be pulled there, but he got away with it, isn't he? Yeah. Halloran dropping back deep again there. Liam Long. They're looking there, but I think there was a foul there by Kevin Collins, yeah. And uh, Kevin is getting his autograph taken there by uh, Michael Collins. Yeah, he's got a yellow card. It seemed harsh enough, didn't it? I, 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 unless I was looking at the wrong person. I didn't see what happened. I couldn't see what, what he did. Yeah. Is it a body uh, check? I think he just body checked, yeah. Kevin, I suppose, knew he was a small bit out of position and he wanted to slow the slow the runner down a little bit. I think that's Liam Long receiving attention down there. So 29 and a half minutes gone. Rock Chapel up a point, but Rock Chapel are going to be facing into what's a nice stiff breeze there in the second half. Long ball kicked in there to Kelleher, but it's broken out and it's uh, Dinjo Callahan to John Callahan, John Dudia. John looking up, picks out a pass with the left leg. Oh, that's Kevin Barrett comes away with the ball and he just just about hex it out there. And that's James White in the middle of the field. Oh, well played. John Callahan is having a, a super game here at number seven today as well. That's David O'Halloran. Jonathan Buckley. Jonathan has been quiet today. Bat Curtin contesting this ball with Kelleher. And Bat comes away with the ball. Oh, super play by, uh, by the fullback. And Kevin Collins wins the breaking ball. Kevin looking up the line here. Goes long. Picks a super ball. Oh. Ball just hopped there over DJ Bond's head. Kilmurray coming away again. Ian Murphy with the ball. Plays a 1-2 there with uh, Owen Barrett. The captain. Owen is giving it out there. That's Liam Long attacking from right half back. A touch that ball on the ground but gets away with it. Jonathan Buckley on the opposite side of the field to where he started. And I think the, it looks like a Rock Chapel ball. Yes, it is. No, or is it? A, I thought he was waving. I thought. Kilmurray ball. A high ball dropping in there. Philip Murphy gets a fist hit. Gives it out there to DJ Bond. Very clever player on the ball, DJ. Oh, super ball out there by Eamon Callan to Ian Lee. Philip Murphy gives up to Liam Collins. Liam looking up the field. Chipping it up there to Ian Guinea. Oh, super move there to Daniel Curtin and Daniel puts Liam Collins away. Liam Collins breaking through the middle. He's got a man inside. Picks out Seamus Hickey. Oh, shit. Oh, Seamus uh, just so well, it was a super block in fairness by the Kilmurray defender. And it's Kilmurray coming away with the ball again. That was um, Owen Creedon there in the middle of the field. Jonathan Buckley looking up to O'Halloran at centre forward, the playmaker. Oh well tackled there by Kevin Collins and Michael Collins uh, Michael Collins um, sounding the short whistle, Brendan Cahill doing a bit of uh, 
Brown knows in there giving him a bit of a hug and talking to him about that yellow card, but I hope uh, it won't, I hope he won't need to in the second half. That would, that would have been a critical score. I think, I think you know, uh, Seamus has got, got caught blocked down the, earlier on as well, and it was just maybe a bit too telegraphed. You know, you, couldn't, you could see he was going, like, maybe it was another dummy was required or something. Uh, Jesus, it's just, like it was a glorious chance and a great move. Yeah. Started by Daniel Cox. They're, they're, yeah, Dan Daniel is, is having a massive, massive, massive game for Oxford today. But uh, you, you don't get much time with that full back no. line in front of goal. Like, and yeah. I'm, uh, I suppose the pass came to him, and he tried to turn and shoot straight away. Like, and and you know, it, it's. Uh, he be critical from up here. Yeah, God, like time, time is, uh, time is scarce he's, there. He's like playing well though. James, James is playing. We're playing much better today. Like I'm, the like at halftime the last day we were saying what's gone wrong, but we can see there's light at the end of the tunnel here. We can we're playing well enough. Uh, you know, unless I know we're going to be against the wind, but uh, like there's the, we we have we're playing well enough to win this game. Well, I think the um, the trees shelter. Well, say the wind, the breeze isn't as much a factor down at the bottom at the. The left-hand goals here, the Rock Chapel will be playing into the second half because of the trees that I, I think it shelters the breeze a lot. It's more of a factor out around the middle of the field. Well, if we, can we see any flags? Like there's a flag, a red flag below here, here blows here, and it's 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 not blowing at all. So maybe maybe it's probably over in the side over near the near the those dressing rooms. Maybe there's a bit of wind, but certainly at this side of the field, there isn't much. Well, the the main performer for me there is uh, I, I I thought uh, Eamon Callaghan was absolutely superb in the first half. There. Yes, he was. He, he did, and he 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 did again. He did what he did. You know, he brought out that ball and, and gave us confidence that we can see a fella come burst the out through their forwards. That'll give confidence to the other backs. And if we could get see a few more of them doing, if we get John Callahan doing that and Brendan even doing it. And his uh, his handling has been superb. He dropped just one ball, but he still brought it out afterwards. But he's caught everything else. Like and uh, aim, and when he goes to the ball, he attacks it. Like I, I'd love to see our half backs doing a bit more of what of what Eamon does because he there's one thing about attacking but attacking with that kind of speed like he comes he makes he he covers 50 or 60 yards there like like in a sprint we need our centre field and our half backs doing the same you know when, when they're attacking would, would, would you know there's a, there's a bit of there's a bit of temper in this and they're flying down the field the other, like if you can get backs doing that, the other defence has to completely reset themselves because if you're only coming so far and lobbing a ball, they can stay in position. But if you're starting to drive holes through them, they have to completely reset and that, that's where you get your, your scores, you open up the player. I suppose Ken Murray will be worried in that they haven't scored for 15 to 20 minutes. Definitely 15 minutes since Ken Murray scored, if not nearly 20 minutes, I'd say. They're not, they're not the most accurate team. I mean, the, the free taker there has, has had a couple of desperate, uh, you know, Bad freeze. He took one here. I mean, it was it was, it was nearly stupid to go for a, for a point here. He should have put it across the square, and he he put it completely wide. It's his own side of the goal. It's criminal offence. Yeah, that, that, and and James White has missed uh, two today as well. Um, yeah, and just looking at the wides, tell you there. What do you think of Vicky at full forward? Like, I I think since Vicky went into full forward. The only problem I saw was in, the, in the first half was that we had we had John Forrest and we had we had uh, Ian Guinea left inside and we, the idea was good to isolate them inside but the, they were actually coming too far out. If you want to play that tactic, you have to have someone on, especially on a bad day like this, on the 14 sort of yard line. So that when the, the, there's a target in there, you can play right over the uh, the, the, the the backs. And if he can if he can flick on a ball, he's in the end the goalkeeper won't have time to handle it. If he only knocks it down, it gives time for the forwards to come in and they're in a real chipping position then twenty one yards out. Yeah, I think uh Rock Chapel will be will be last week I remember Joe you were saying uh, the half time whistle can't come fast enough. Uh, it's a different story today. It is um no we can we're playing well enough to win it. Um, I, 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 there's goals in this. There, there's certain there's certainly goals in us today. Well, I think I think one goal would have a major uh, bearing on the game today. Anyway, I'll just go back here to try and get a word with uh, a former Rock Chapel great, Dennis Dickyome, and we'll try and entice him down out of the crowd here to have a word with us. A man with a rare collection of medals, I'd say, of junior, junior, intermediate, and senior medals there uh, in Cork County, and played football for Cork as well. Dennis, your thoughts there on that? I think they're playing reasonably well. They looked a bit nervous early on. They got to the pitch of the game there after about 10 or 15 minutes. Kicked some great scores. They just need to be a bit more direct. I think there was a bit 
the passing was a bit intricate there for a while. The forwards tend to come in around the square. A few people were coming through there. They came in around the, the middle instead of staying out wide. I think fast direct ball seems to be the way to go. Uh, inside forwards seem to be doing well with the direct ball, so I don't... Yeah, we, we, we were saying the same, Jory. You were saying the same thing the last day and today, that like when Rock Chapel leave the ball in uh, long, that uh, they seem to cause uh, way more damage that Kilmurray were all backing in and playing a Donegal style defence when they were given time to set it up. Yeah, I mean, they, they've really only played for 10 or 15 minutes and I mean, they're a point ahead. I think they're doing very well. If they increase the intensity of 5%, five, 5% I think they, they should win it easily. Did you, any particular players catch your eye there, no? Well, uh, I'm not familiar with them, but number four there played very well. Um, Eamon Callaghan, we were saying that, that he's been absolutely outstanding. They have an unbelievable game. Well, no, they're, you know, uh, the forwards are playing well, but they're not defending. Once possession is lost, they could defend a bit better, I think. Um, but, I mean, it's a matter of keeping that going and maybe increasing the intensity by not a lot, because they're doing well when they have the ball. Right. Correct. Rock Chapel are moving in the right direction anyway because they've got the last four scores and Kilmory haven't scored in about 15 minutes. So if you, if you were the Rock Chapel manager, you'd be just saying up the intensity. If you were the Kilmory manager, what would you be telling your players in there? Uh, take, take the chances you're getting. They missed quite a few kickable scores up there. So, I mean, he'll be disappointed with that. Um, I still think it's there for the winning. It's just yeah. a bit more intensity. Beautiful. Thanks very much. Cormac, what do you think of the match? It's good. I, the Rock are, had a had a few scoring chances that they didn't take them, but, uh, but Kilmore and Liam's playing well, and so is Eamon Callaghan. What about the uncle? What about the uncle? Uh, yeah. Well, he didn't let any let in any goals yet. We're happy enough for him. <laughs> Hopefully not. So four points to three, but Rock Chapel playing into Rock Chapel playing into the breeze. Michael Collins fires it in, and it's John Duty coming away with the ball there. Oh, Seamus Hickey does superbly well inside. Oh, harsh call there now, actually. Harsh call there now for for Kilmore, even though Seamus is. Uh, I hope he's not going down injured. Oh. No, he seems to be alright. He's a he's a tough bit of stuff. He won that superbly well, Jerry. He worked hard for that, and that's 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 what we want him doing. That's that's exactly what he what he's good at. I thought the defender had kind of committed to the shoulder, and you know, he yeah, he did meet him and all, but I thought there was no malice in it. Anyway, first opportunity to Rock Chaplin is Kevin Collins having a go here. Well, Kevin used to kick the freeze in the forwards before in his uh, when he used to play up front. But it's against the wind. I could be eating my words here now. That's a, oh barely, barely wide. It was not a bad effort at all. Like the chances are too far and few between. We have to manage the chances better. We, you know, we. Mm, I don't know. I'm sure he had the range of disease there. Like, and I, I'm not sure when you say his range disease. Like, he's at the extent that he's going to have to force it, and if you're forcing it, you're not going to be under, uh, able to, 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 to smoothly put it over. Like that's ball breaks on the middle of the field there now. Ginger Callan definitely being fouled there, and uh, that's number twelve there. Is Daniel is down there injured? I think. But uh, to go back to that short free thing though, like, I think it's very disheartening to have a free and to take a shot and not even work a shooting chance. If it's if you don't get the shot away, it's intercepted and the ball goes up the field. You're saying, well, isn't it better to kick it dead and regroup? Um, no, like I mean. What I'd be working for there is you get the ball in, you get another free further in, or you work something. Do you know? What, be, do you know? Be intelligent about it, and uh, because it was it was a 50-50 chance at best there. Do you know? Yeah. That's, <laughs> I, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to agree to disagree on that one anyway. Brendan Cahill now standing over this there, looking for a uh, oh, Brendan, not and, and uh, that was on Barrett coming away there to Liam Long. Liam looking up, chipping a nice ball into space with Kevin Collins. Oh, Kevin and uh, David O'Hallan came to that. That's a line ball to David O'Hallan. Kevin, not too happy. Kevin knows on the other card he'd want to be a, a small bit more careful, really. Ball lobbed in there towards the, the tall Greg Barrett. But again, it's Eamon Callaghan. This man is having a man of the match performance. 
based in Donegal at the moment, passes it out there to John Dudley. Uh, John. And, oh, Michael Collins is pulling out the book again. For a foul there, I think that foul is on Owen Creedon. It was harsh enough because Creedon was down at, at, at hip level, you know, yeah. from the height. Yeah, I didn't see any malice in it, and I think that's four Oxhapel players now on yellow cards. There's a four backs, is it four of the backs? There's a Eamon Kevin. Eamon Kevin and uh, Brendan Cahill all on yellows, and is there a four player? Ball chipped in there. John Callahan skirmishing there. James White taking a lot out of that. He's getting away with it. And he kicks that ball over the bar. He's definitely their, uh, their inspirational leader, is James White. Yeah, he's in, he's in the locker room. The, the, the move before that, uh, I think the last, there was no need to pass it to John Judy. Like, we were, we were free with that ball. We just extra passes Jesus we need to get it down the field faster and that's the scores tied up Kilmurray first on the scoreboard they'll be glad to have got that score because it's a long time since they scored last that's a good kick out by Tony against the breeze and that's one there this time by uh, Pat O'Sullivan Pat has had a good influence in the game man that hadn't started the last day Greg Barrett oh Eamon Callan breaks away and coming out is there this man could walk on water today it's a great pass up there to Daniel Curtin. He's after shaking off that knock that he got. He's looking up. Oh, cleverly picks out a pair. Plays a 1-2, but Rock Chapel are playing this very tight. Daniel drills, looking for Ian Ganey there. But uh, that was intercepted there. And I think that's David O'Leary taking a lot out of the ball there. James White again looking up. I think he miskicked that, but he got away with it. David O'Halloran. Very clever player, doesn't waste the ball, Pat Sullivan. And that's Dom or uh, Creedon, one Creedon kicking a dangerous ball in there. Broken away yet again by Eamon Callahan, but came out there and it's, it's broken. I think that's um, that's Greg Barrett a long ways from home over there on the opposite side of the pitch. William Buckley gets in the shot, dangerous ball there, oh, that could have gone anywhere, it was flicked on there by Kelleher, came off the post, came straight back across the face of the goal again, but I, I think it's, it surprised everybody, and wide. We, uh, we, we, we've, we've, we've started the second half the same as the way as we started the first half, and we need, because if a goal goes in here we're in trouble. Yeah, well, we, we got away at murder, and Greg Barrett, the big man, has gone off there. I'm trying to see who came on as a substitute for him there. I think, is it number eight, number 18? And that's Alan O'Sullivan. <laughs> no, John Judy, or Dinger Callan, just going down on the ball there. Steps, break, breaking the first tackle and bursting up the sideline. Well done. Fisting the ball, well done by Dinjo there to Seamus Hickey. Back to John Dudia. Chips a lovely ball in there to a DJ Bond. DJ looking for someone to give it to, slipping, pass it back to Liam Collins. Looking across the middle, picks out, or oh, tries to pick out John Dudia, but it was well intercepted there by James White. David O'Halloran coming away again. That's Eamon Callahan yet again. He was, he was. Uh, it's a sideline ball, but he was uh, he was pushed just as he was kicking it. Number 12, Daniel Curtin, is replaced by number 25, William Murphy. William Murphy. Well, I, I presume he's injured, is he? Yeah. I hope he's injured because fucking hell. I mean, William is a great player, but like Daniel, Daniel has played well. That's David O'Halloran turning and looking up there. More than anything else, they, they know. You see the other players, William would bend in better with the other players. On Creedon, met there, and the referee is pulling out his notebook there again. No, I don't think Dinjo's. Dinjo's not on the other. Pulling out the notebook there, and I think he's after. I think no, that's Dinjo Callan, is it? I mean, I think I think there's a lot of players that aren't playing as well as Daniel Cotton that, that William could have been substituted substituted for. 
I think that's if he isn't injured, that's a huge mistake. Yeah, he definitely wouldn't have been uh, an obvious switch into it. So, short break in the play there. William Buckley stemming over this. Exactly eight minutes gone. Kilmore have one point scored in the second half. Twenty-five yards out, and he splits the post with that. Kilmore supporters on the ascent again here. Two weeks since the, the drawn match. That was a low scoring affair as well. One four to seven points. The goal coming from John Forrest. We thought today it might be a slightly higher scoring, but at the rate they're going, it's going to be something very, very close to it. Tony Collins chips it out there. Oh, great kick out. Picks out Dinjo Callahan. Dinjo holds off the tackle, looking up the field. But Kilmurray, in fairness to them, they play from the front, their backs. Well run there by uh, Ian Ganea. And it's Seamus Hickey on the burst. It's a lovely little chip pass out there to, DJ, or to uh, Willem Murphy. Willem was just running off his shoulder, but just came across the face of the goals and wide. So nine minutes, and it's starting to, to darken up here. We might get a few drops of rain. Club chairman Morris Dolly down in front of us there, encouraging his his team. Jason McDonald. Dinjo Callahan getting up for this with James White, but James wins this one. Turning on to his favourite left leg. Gives it back there. That's Ian Murphy. Chipping it across the field there to Pat Sullivan. The big man with the blue boots is on the burst. He's looking up. David Keller trying to make space inside, but Rock Chapel crowding him out there, and that's Owen Barrett. Owen Barrett skips inside. Looking for David Kelleher, or James Kelleher. That's back to O'Halloran. Uh, bad curtain just got in a, a little touch there. That was a good attempt with wide, wide on the right. One, two. Uh, Kilmore have had four or five bad enough misses as well in this game. They 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 had an you know bat pull the jersey there if the referee was strict enough he could have he could have blown it. Oh, bat is the master of trigonometry. He had his angles right. Don't you worry. <laughs> Tony Collins with the kick out. Kevin Collins goes up, but again, Rock Chapel, they're, they're a bit bunched under the, under the ball and there's no one coming in to read a break. You know, bat holding out. Oh, well done there. It's that man yet again. We hardly need to name him at this stage. John Forrest out on the wing now. Chips the ball forward. Uh, it was, but. Yeah, but Barrett is playing Ian from the front because he knows they're not going to kick high ball into him. David O'Halloran again. Looking up there. Well intercepted there by uh, Philip Murphy. Rock Chapel's back to hold him in this game. John Forrest again, skipping inside. Looking up there. Chips the ball into space for Willem Murphy. Willem, Willem doesn't seem to have lost any of his speed anyway. Taking on his man here now. It's Liam Long. Oh, gives a great ball to Seamus Hickey. Oh, yes! Yes! Get in there! Get in there! What a finish by Seamus Hickey. A super finish. <laughs> William. William Murphy. William Murphy, why? Big difference. And Willem does what it is Willem does best. Runs at the defence, plays an absolute inch perfect pass. Now, in fairness, Seamus Hickey had a lot to do to get that ball under control with one hand. Absolutely, he did, but you know, it's just we have somebody else to carry the ball now as well as Seamus. And that's James White here. Or sorry, that it, it is James White, but crowded out of it. Liam Collins there with the ball. I'm just thinking. Is it John, in my opinion, there I think John Doody is, is struggling in the middle of the field. He's, he's, we've lost a good football there in the middle of the field lately. Yeah, and Owen Creedon is having a quite enough game in the middle of the field too. Dinjo, Dinjo is a hot ball there. I think uh, he must have spoke back to 
I think Mr. Moses back to the referee. So Rock Chapman have scored the exact tally they scored the last day. Now they've got 1 4. The only difference is that there's only 13 minutes gone in the second half today. And they're in a two point lead. That's on Creedon this time. And that's David O'Leary, the big centre back, bursting forward. Didn't know, never looked comfortable there when he. Uh, when the space opened up in front of him, he just never looked happy there at all. John Forrest breaking away, gives it back to Philip Murphy. Philip looking up, chips a lovely ball there up to Ian Guinea. Ian out and wins it. Back to John Forrest, space across the pitcher, and now Fox Chapel can switch it. Oh, by God, Liam Collins will spot him. Spots his cousin, Willem. Willem. Oh, that one just got away from him. Ah, oh, just got away from him. He'll be disappointed with that. Yeah, as I say, he's got a bad knee. In, he got a bad knee injury there, and uh, we hope he's not after tweaking it. Dangerous ball in here to David O'Halloran. Stand up, John Callan. Oh, he pulls that to the left and wide. He'll be disappointed with that because that's his second wide there now in the last six or seven minutes. Sixteen minutes to go. Rock Chapel with a two-point lead. There's a man down injured here. It looks like Brendan Cahill. I didn't see what happened there. Did any, any of you see what happened there? Didn't see anything. I didn't see. I don't know. But uh, I think Rock Chapel got that goal at, uh, at a vital time because they were starting to struggle a small bit. It was. Uh, Kilmurray had kind of settled, come into the game like in the, at the start of the second half. There, and the Rock seemed to be kind of losing their way, but this seemed to have settled them again a little bit. No, they need to push on though. No, they, I mean we've got Philip raiding down the field there. We need to get movement. Keep, keep it. Keep the pressure on. Still worried about William there. He, he to me, I, I think the head is down with him. I think he's. Yeah, he, he doesn't look. Uh, he doesn't look comfortable. He might be just annoyed with himself that he left that last ball spill away oh, from that's him. That's all. We we we'll live with that. Yeah, he's a tough customer as well. Now Dinjo Callahan gone up for that, but it's broken away there. with Philip Murphy breaks like a like a young greyhound coming out there first. Liam Collins with the ball gives it to his brother Kevin. Oh, Kevin would be disgusted with the pass that he gave there and that's back to William Buckley who's playing a long long ways out the field uh, right now DJ Bond covering back here Jonathan Buckley pulls in that ball and that's David Kelleher inside James Kelleher and that's Liam Long I think turning on with his right leg and what a block there by Liam Collins super block the big man Pat Sullivan is possibly gone into the full forward line. He's standing inside there on the edge of the square when that, when that cross was cut out. And I think they're after putting possibly Pat Sullivan in inside on Eamon Callaghan. David O'Hallan putting this ball down anyway. 45 yards out, not the biggest man in the field, but he looks like he's a good striker of a ball. Oh, just slipped as he was kicking that, but it's in towards Pat Sullivan as Eamon Callaghan breaks it away. Philip Murphy pulling on the ball there and there's uh, Michael Collins no the corner forward Greg Barrett has gone off yeah Greg Barrett has gone off number 18 is Alan O'Sullivan came on for him Ian Murray substitution number 7 Ian Murphy number 17 Ian Barrett Crowley is William okay? Kilmurray emptied their bench last day uh, very quickly in the second half and they're doing it again today. It is, but it, it, uh, I, I wouldn't know enough about their players, but I mean, sometimes if you have a lot of good strong fellas, like, it's better off to give them more time because bringing guys on with only five minutes to go or ten minutes to go, it doesn't give them time to settle into a game. Yeah, that's a super catch there by John Doody. Give the pass there then to Kevin Collins. Back to Brendan Cahill. Oh! Brendan disappointed there with that fist pass. It was real eye the needle stuff. There was much room inside there, and again it's Kilmurray there, and that's Jonathan Buckley wearing 12, lobbing a high ball in there towards Philip Murphy. Oh, what a catch by Philip Murphy! Well done, and he's being, he's a uh, Kilmurray lads there coming in for a, a, bit, a bit of a late tackle afterwards. Oh, John Judy spills that ball, spills that ball, and that's Liam Long, William Barrett running on there, and the, uh, the captain on the overlap, trying to set up something. William Buckley, I uh, was. 
Kind of crazy, a super block down by Kevin Collins, by the way, but it was he never settled on that ball at all, William Buckley. DJ Bond, the meeting men, knocks one man even coming away with the ball. Oh, plays a super ball down the line there. Sprint there between Kevin Barrett and uh, Seamus Oh, it's Kilmurray again coming away with the ball. Chipped across there to Pat Sullivan, the man that started today instead of. Uh, instead of Dominic Creedon and Pat kicks a high ball in there great ball actually Kick, caught by David O'Hallon that's James White again their leader on the pitch the big man gets a shot in with the left leg oh, but James Kellard failed to keep it in and that ball has gone wide that was some catch by Philip Murphy there. Oh, jeez. Philip is having a super game. <laughs> Between himself now and Eamon inside. Like, Eamon hasn't been as, as prominent because he hasn't had to be. But Bab has brought out three or four great balls. Another unusual switch in that John Callaghan has gone off now. I know John had a groin strain and he's being replaced there by his brother Noel. All the way from the Taliban. <laughs> he is. Noel is a uh, reminiscent of uh, Joe McMahon there from Tyrone during his, uh, his beard groin days. He's a tight defender, does now. Ball breaking around the middle there. And that's Owen Creedon. He's come into this game a small bit more in the second half. Not as influential today as he was the last day. Ball goes across there. David O'Leary kicks a, a hit and hope high ball. Eamon, Eamon Callan goes up first, but the ball is just being juggled around there like a hot potato. And it, it's Bat Curtin, the accountant. Bat comes away with the ball to Liam Collins, Liam won't panic on the ball, gives it to Brendan Cahill bit of a, a clash of players there but it's Seamus Ike. Ah, superb, absolutely won that ball and he's got them He's got them on the back foot again now plays it across to Ian Rockshap will just need a point here, Ian was half blocked comes into Seamus and that is over the bar that was reminiscent of uh, Something you'd see in American NBA basketball. Oh, jeez. I, 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 I didn't realize he knew exactly where he was. I thought, like, I, but it, Ian got blocked down. That was, a, that was the, I thought the score was gone. Yeah, Seamus did well there. Very well. Brings his tally to a goal and two points. But more importantly, he's winning ball up front for Rock Chapel, who are back on the attack. Brennan Cahill chips it into space. Brennan intercepted that. Poor ball today. Yeah, he's... Jonathan Buckley... Jonathan goes long here, back curtain, and it's Philip Murphy again. Philip passes it back to Tony. They were teammates in the indoor soccer over in Wheeling about 20 years ago. Tony coming away with the ball. All right, all right. Pat O'Connor having a heart attack in front of us here. Oh, Eamon Callan, surely he was tackled there, back up on his feet quickly. Well done. Rock Chapman playing a dangerous game here now, working the ball out of defence. DJ Bond contesting his fighting heart for it. All well read there by Liam Collins coming on to it. And Liam wins the free. <coughs> and it's Owen Barrett being called back there. Michael Collins wants to have awarded him. DJ was making the, the runs that he always makes, the quicker and looking for the free, and he, your man stopped him. Yeah, Liam Collins and DJ Bond fought well there for that ball, so he did. Oh, they, 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 he, he, judged it, he judged it perfectly because... Questions himself before the ball comes to, to, to be on the right side of the player. Yeah, he's one of the most intelligent players in there. Aye, and he covers some ground. But that said, the quick free would have suited Rock Chapel better there because there was space and that's inside. What, that's what TJ, that's what, uh, that's what uh, DJ spotted, and, and uh, your man stopped him, the back stopped him. Liam Collins chips it in to Seamus Hickey. Oh, just Bones just beating him, but he keeps it in. Work it outside now, it gives it to Willem Murphy. Willem throws it out there to Ian Guinea. Ian turns on to the left, but that's going wide to the right. Keeper keeps it in. Jason McDonald working it out the field again there. Oh, that ball came to James White there. He just slipped as the ball came to him. He needn't be looking for a free at all because he just slipped. Seamus Hickey breaking in on the right. Oh, it seems to be a foul there, but that's going to be a free out anyway. Yeah, he slipped and went to ground there, but I thought he was being held as well. But yeah, they, they, they could switch for a couple of minutes because they're playing a lot of ball to Seamus and the, and the backs are starting to congregate on Seamus If they could just switch, William has been here and, and DJ have been free a few times, like just to switch the play and rattle it up a bit. Yeah, because if William got out in the wing there, he, if he's right, he'd be able to run at him. He'd be good for another run. 23 minutes gone. Rock Chapel has won five to five points. Rock Chapel up three points. 
eight minutes to go. But uh, in a low scoring game like that. Uh, and that ball quickly taken in there to Willem Murphy. Willem. Oh, that came off. That that, that went definitely went astray. Oh Brendan Cahill just slipped there then and uh, that's Jonathan Buckley who's coming into this game a lot. Hoofed that ball up the field. But it's bat court. Oh, that spills it for once. James Kelleher came away with the ball. And it's Willem Buckley coming through here now. A lot. That's a super effort by him. A oh, super score. And Rock Chappell will be sick in there now. Uh -huh, yeah. Because, like the field is, is like that. Oh, Bat will be disappointed there now because he was after breaking all well with the ball there and it just spilled away from him. We had, we had the ball down our own forward line. They were just the, can't keep the feet. Couple of one or two mistakes there just... Uh, was it... We, I, I don't know who passed the ball out there. Was it William? Give a, a kick pass away out the field. It, it seemed to go off the second ball out. Yeah. Brendan Cahill just slipped in. So Tony Collins restarting the play there. He chips it out there towards uh, Dinjok. Ah, oh, super catch there by the big man. In the middle of the field, Brendan Cahill steps around a few players there, picks out Liam Collins. Too hard, too hard. Liam chips it there to John Forrest. Back to Kevin Collins. Kevin looking to pick out a pass, and he does. Brendan Cahill going forward again. Steps inside. Great run by John Doody. Anyone running on his shoulder? He's got Willem Murphy. Willem's got space there, but Willem hasn't done much shooting practice there lately. Oh, what a score! What a score by Willem Murphy off the outside of the boot. <laughs> Ah, oh, that was some finish. Four points. That's four points. That was some finish. Rock Chapel back into a three point lead again. Like bringing on William has changed the game. He's, he's, he's just added so much to the team. Now, John Doody getting a good run at this, breaks it down to Seamus Hickey, but Kilmore coming away, it's Liam Long with the ball. Plays a nice ball up there, Philip Murphy attacking it, gets to it, but the break goes to David Halloran and. Uh, Foul there by Niall Callaghan and Philip and Kilmurray on the break. That's Pat Sullivan. Pat gives it back there to Willem Buckley. This man can shoot. Oh, miss kicks it this time. And Tony Collins. Oh, Tony spills the ball there and uh, just tackled in and it's gone out for a 45. Rock Chapel, three point lead. There is 25 minutes gone and 15 seconds. So five minutes plus stoppage time. David O'Halloran having another go at this 45. Now he slipped and he kind of missed kicked the last one. Greg Barrett is gone, but Pat Sullivan is inside there around the edge of the square and he's a, a massive man. Connects better with this one, but it just goes to the, the left and wide. One six to six. 25 years since Rock Chapel won that first county junior title down in Inchigila when they bet Carberry Rangers under the leadership of Pat Curtin. Can Tom Doody be the second Rock Chapel man to steer the parish to county titles? Tony kicks it out there. Kevin Collins chips it down there to uh, Brendan Cahill, having his jersey pulled. Oh, Seamus Hickey does brilliantly again here. Skipped inside Kevin Barrett, and he's on the break. He's being blatantly fouled there, but the referee plays the advantage. And that's a one bar out there coming away with the ball. Liam Long. A tough attacking wing back. Ian, Ian Guinea trying to tackle him there. A nice one two there played with William Buckley. He's a clever footballer, is William Buckley. Oh, well met there by Eamon Callahan. And the ball just drops to Brendan Cahill. Oh, he does well there. Does well because the ball was just Brendan Cahill did well there, and it's Willem Murphy coming away with the ball. Willem would be known as a as a ball carrier. Oh, just slips there. <laughs> Willem still with the ball. He's slipping, fellas in front of him are slipping, and Michael Collins decided that he'd taken enough out of it. Kilmurray back on the break again. Ball chipped out the wing here. And I think this is uh, this is the sub, Alan O'Sullivan, who's a, another big man. But that ball is going to carry out over the. Ah, oh, but it's a it's a it's an awkward ball because it's a sideline ball from practically on the inline. 
Joe Cahill barking out the instructions here in front of us. Keep their heads and, uh, and keep walking. About three minutes to go, it's a. Uh, the rain's starting to come down here now. Long ball kick by Kevin Collins. His brother Liam is under it. And that's one there by David O'Leary wearing number six. It's James White again. This James White is one tough customer. He's a lot of ball played today, but that time the ball just spilled away from him and he was forced to touch it on the ground. Rock Chapel should slow it down here now. <laughs> My thumbs are so numb now from the cold. I can hardly unlock the phone. Two minutes left, guys. DJ Vaughan, the son of Willie, DJ won an All Ireland club last year. Two years ago with Meeting. All Ireland Junior, but again it's Kilmore coming back. They're, they need a goal. They're hardly going to do it on points at this stage. Willem Murphy getting back to tackle, but Kilmore space opening up there. That's 22, Paddy O'Connor. And that ball is kicked over the bar. That ball has gone over the bar. And it's down to a two point margin. Uh. So with two minutes, one minute to go. <laughs> one minute to go in this game. Tony Collins restarts the game. It's a dangerous lead now of two points. Tony Collins drills it out. That ball beats everybody and makes it all the way to John Forrest in the middle of the field to Liam Collins. Rock Chapel now just need to work this ball up the field and try and hold it up here for a minute. Seamus Hickey. Just slow it down now, our chapel hold possession, and they, and they do. Ian Ganey, can Ian find the men? Nobody loose around the middle of the field. DJ Bond, Rock Chapel playing keep ball here. And DJ is a good man to do this. Drills it long across. What a ball to Willem Murphy. What a ball. And Willem gets his second score. And Joey Mahoney jumped as high as I've seen him jumping since 89. The commentator announces two minutes of injury time here. Two minutes of stoppage time. Normal time is up exactly, just as the goalkeeper. Jason McDonald is placing that ball, but what a ball across by DJ Vaughan there. A peach of a pass. That's Liam Long coming up the field there now, being tackled by Dinjo. David O'Leary chips a long ball in there. That's uh, James White has probably gone into the forwards here now because Kilmore are looking for a goal, but it's Eamon Callaghan sweeping across and clearing the ball out of the danger area. Bat Curtin there now. And that's James Kelleher. James gets a, a, a ball across with the left leg. Philip Murphy gets a hand to it. And that's gone out for a, a 45. It was to uh, Came off of Philip. Philip protested. That wouldn't be unusual. That wouldn't be... A, yeah, I don't think you can take the fact that Philip is protesting as uh, evidence to, for <laughs> that, that there was a, a, a kick out. <laughs> David O'Halloran, they need to chip it in here. James White is inside there now, and I'd be worried about uh, that big man being in around the edge of the square. Bad 45, the ball spills around the place. I think that's James White on his knees with the ball, and uh, yes! Michael Collins deems that he threw that ball. So Rock Chapel, three point lead, one minute to go of stoppage time. Number five, Brendan Cass, is replaced by number 18. Mike Dudia, the sub that had a super match in the Duhalla final against uh, Mill Street. He was one of the players of the match. He's getting his uh, moment to play in the county final, and it's Eamon Callaghan. Rock Chapel's man of the match today, without a shadow of a doubt. And Eamon breaks the tackle, chips it up to John Forrest. Eamon getting a dirty belt off the ball there by uh, James White, but he doesn't react to it. And it's number 18 there is Alan O'Sullivan winning a foul. William Buckley chips it into space with Philip Murphy using all his 38 years experience. And the referee blows the one whistle. And Rock Chapel are county junior champions for 2012 on the 25th year anniversary. And how appropriate that it was that man, Philip Murphy, after playing for Rock Chapel since he was 17 years old, wins his first Duhalla medal and county medal this year. 
how appropriate for who is undoubtedly Rockchapel's best defender, I'd say, ever over a long period of time. But the man of the match today, and no doubt about it, though, was Eamon Callaghan. He won every single ball that was kicked into him and gave an exhibition. Ah, 
Tom, come over here now. We'll just say a few words. Tom, you were you were you were corner forward 25 years ago in Oxford. won their first county. How do you feel after that? Delighted. Um, fantastic win. Um, I think um, over the two days we were definitely the better team. Uh, our our backs really stood out again today. Uh, Eamon and Philip and, and um, Brendan and John Callahan, they were outstanding. Um, everything was thrown at him and, you know, we kept kept doing the simple thing. Um, and eventually we got that goal. And I think the goal was vital there in the second half. It was the goal. The goal was the difference uh, between the two teams in the finish. Um, bringing on William Murphy. Ah, yeah, had a huge part to play in it. Um, to be honest, I, I thought we'd be under pressure to win the first round against Cara without Willem. But fair play to the boys on the day, they, they really play great football. But, you know, today it has to be said that, you know, Willem was really the difference in the end. Uh, he scored two fantastic points and set up Seamus for the goal. Um, you know, he's a great player and has been a great player over the last number of years, and I'm, I'm really delighted for him. And I hear he had to work unbelievably hard in the gym to, to, to come back weeks ahead of schedule. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, they talk about county players, but uh, this man is is on, on the same par. Um, if uh, a county player did what this man did, you know, they'd be talking about it for weeks in the papers. But uh, fair play to him. He, he's really diligent and, you know, he works hard and fair play to him. And no man will make less of a fuss about it. Oh, no doubt. Uh, maybe he might sing a bit tonight after a few pints. We'll work on that later. Thanks, Tom. Let's grab this man here, Kevin Collins. To bring, the, bring that pony over here, Kevin, and to have a look at it for a second. Kevin, um, you're the second Rock Chapel man to, to captain the club to junior championship or to county junior. What are your thoughts after that? Um, she's delighted, no, honestly. Um, I don't want him, we don't want him to play it particularly well today. I think well, maybe Kilmore probably up their game as well. And we got off to a very slow start. And at half time, I have to say, I was worried because there was a nice fresh breeze out there. But um, I think the goal probably turned us. The goal in Willem, Willem's introduction, like as well. Hugely important, like. But it just is. delighted, no, delighted. Because funnily enough, they took off Daniel Curtin, who was after having a superb 40 minutes when he went off. He was after having an outstanding match, and uh, you know some of the lads around us were thinking that they had made a really strange move taking him off. But Willem came on and he set up the goal and he scored two points yeah, with the width and the width he brings. He had another opportunity that went just wide. He's um, pay, it's very hard to mark pace. So, and that's what he has in abundance he's a great swerve and he definitely definitely we wouldn't have the cup on it for him definitely and uh, I, I have no doubt he had to put himself through hell to, uh, to get himself right for today a fellow who he wouldn't want any pat in the back for it or he'd be you know he'd be going about his business quietly I know that every, every night since he got injured he has never been above the field he's been wheeling at the gym every night not to mind what he's doing during work before work to get himself for today and I'm delighted because as much as he was delighted for us for the Duhalla Championship he must have gutted him to miss it but to come on and basically win the game for us. I am absolutely delighted for him. Yeah. Tom, we were just talking there about the, the contribution of uh, Willem when he came on there today. I was saying that uh, there was a few eyebrows raised when Daniel went off because he was playing really well, but we were saying that uh, the, the general uh, upping and afterwards is that Willem was nearly the winning of the game and with his contribution when he came on. Yeah, but look, if Willem was, if Willem was, was injury free all the year, Willem was one of our best players all the year, there's no, no getting away from that. Now, Daniel took a knock to the knee and he was, he was struggling a little bit and he said the knee was giving trouble and we said, fine, look, we have a man that's going to up this a small bit and we knew well that the physio told me there last night that 15, 20 minutes he was good for it and we, we were not going to let him on that line because he's too much of an athlete, too much of a footballer, there's great hat in that fella and he's not going to let you down. Yeah, he set up the goal for Seamus and he scored two points himself. Well, it speaks for itself yeah. and like that, that's William all the year, like he's a, he's a massive engine, that man will go up and down the field all the afro. But look, I thought overall, the whole atom, the subs and all that came on, I mean, this is a panel. I am always saying, right, from we wanted for this training Sunday morning above in Rock Chapel, we had our, we had our 30 players above. You know, we couldn't get to challenge games at the end, we had them fellas, and that was better than any, any, any challenge games to us. We had our own games, and we, we lifted floor above in the field, and we, a lot of the boys stood up there in the field, and today was the result, in result. We started slowly. We, we went down three points to, to no score. We went to 15, 17 minutes, no score, and I'd be honest, we were getting worried. I said, like, if they'll take another one or two on here, we're in fierce trouble. We'd look, we were winning, she had a ball, we weren't scoring, we had a few wides, but 
the next thing then we got a few frees and we put them over and we tacked on and we went in the pint open. I was very happy at halftime. And like I said at halftime to the boys, lads, half an hour from a county middle, do you want it or don't? And you, you either go for it or just sit back and let the opposition have a go at you. And uh, talking about uh, about leadership and, and showing that they wanted it there today, um, the, the, your thoughts on the contribution of uh, Eamon Callaghan, cornerback? Oh, I thought Eamon was absolutely outstanding to the world. That man is great footballer and he has all the abilities like this. That fella is playing great football all the year, but he tidied up everything in the back line. And you now the two cornerbacks sent all our half back line. I thought all over the field, fellas put in, put in a good shift there for the out. And after that, you can't ask no more. No, but even even neutrals were there now today. Were asking who is this number four? Like he just he had a day uh, of days there today where where everything he touched stuck today. Like oh, he's 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 absolutely brilliant. He obviously said that man didn't have him behind him and great burst the speed out of defence and set he up set he up attacks and that's what you want in players and he delivered to the end. We knew it was in him. He knew it was in him. So all we had to do was to try and get it out. Yeah. And we did. Tom, thanks, man. Thank we'll talk to you later. Now I'm just joined there by. Uh, a legend of Rock Chapel cycling and uh, former legend of Rock Chapel GA, Johnny the Monk Stack. Johnny, um, what do you think of today? I thought it was a, a tough, hard game. I thought we, we hung in there. I thought we, we, we found it hard to get going, but we still kept our, uh, kind of kept it as a team. We worked hard for another and we, we kind of put, made it, put them under pressure to score out of bad ways. We had them ourselves, but we, we kind of just got the break them at the goal. I think we really made a big difference when he came on. A massive difference. But you, you, what you said there is a very interesting comment. We found it hard to get going. We went down three points to no score in the start of the match and they got the first two points of the second half as well and then we seemed to kind of get going again. Yeah, we did, but we, I think we... We, we kind of rushed our ball a bit up front, we took wrong options and we were kind of passing ball with fellas and fellas up in their backs and we just kind of, sometimes it doesn't work for you. I, mean, I, I thought at times that day it was, it was going to leave us down again, but thanks be to God, he came right. It did. Uh, Seamus Hickey, uh, in the second half especially, he won a power of ball. He had a great first half too, but in the second half there, he won a power of ball up, up front of tough ball. Like. Yeah, we, he was our ball wasn't going right. I thought we, wouldn't, we were kind of a bit shattered in the first half. In the foul, we were not moving, we were not moving like, as well as we, as, we should, as we should. But I think we moved a little bit better in the second half. We used our ball a little bit better. And we, just got, we came out of the right side of it. Yeah, any, uh, any players in, in particular catch your eye for man of the match contenders? Oh, yeah, man, it's a brilliant game full back. I think the backs are brilliant all year, though. Yeah. I thought midfield, I thought the whole team is a unit like, you know, played. It's just a tough game, like. A lot of pressure was on them. Because everybody said they had left it after the last year, but I, I don't believe in that. But we've never lost the last three play and our record still stands. Yeah. Um, I know he's your son in law, but uh, Philip Murphy had an absolutely outstanding game there. Um, winning and he's he's uh, he's only about 38 years young, winning his first medal, but um, first two holiday championship, first county, and no man deserved this more than Philip did. And he, I, 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 I know him a long time now. And when we go to weddings and things, he, he's inside in the gym the following morning. He, he, he's a fitness fanatic, and that's why so he's going. That's why he's so still there. He's looking to be fitness fanatic because all the fellas at his age wouldn't be able to tie their laces. <laughs> No, he's, he, he keeps himself right he, when he works hard. He, trains, yeah, he, he, hard. he did a great second half there, especially. He came out, he brought out a power ball as well. Well, yeah, I was delighted. He had the last ball for the game at all. They were delighted with that. Yeah, I think we said that in the commentary. There's a, there's a no man deserved it more to be coming away with the ball. Johnny, you might be possibly sighted in Rock Chapel tonight and Paddy's around 9 or 10 o'clock. Oh, it would be like, be like 87, 89 all over again. <laughs> That's great, Johnny. Thanks a minute. Yeah, good we're delighted to be joined here by... Uh, Joey Casey, who captained Rock Chapel 25 years ago when they won their first uh, county junior out in Inchigila. Joey, 25 years later, what are, you, what are your thoughts on it? It feels just as good as, as it did 25 years ago, even though we weren't playing there today. But excellent, a fantastic win. Uh, they, and I suppose what makes it better, they had to fight tooth and nail for it. Yeah, there wasn't much between the teams, and uh, even Kevin said it in his speech there, that ball that hit the post and came back across the face of the goal above there could have gone you know gone anywhere and I think if uh, Kim Murray were to have got a goal at that stage it would have tilted the balance in their favour it, it, it probably it, it might have alright because it was always going to be a tight game like scores would have to come by and uh, every score was was going to be matter out there today like you know and I think the goal seemed to settle Rock Chapel as well I thought they played with a lot more confidence after they got the goal it seemed to give them that bit of breathing space fellas kind of I, I you know they just seemed to broaden the chest they attacked the ball better they won every 50-50 ball after that 
and I, I thought like even for the last after that goal I thought there was never any doubt but Rock Chapel were going to win it it did because Kilmore were after getting two points on the trot at the start of the second half when Rock Chapel got that goal um, and speaking of the goal it was a, it was a what a pass from uh, Willem Murphy to set it up Willem cut in and he passed it across to Seamus Hickey yes, uh, William like uh, for somebody who came on uh, I suppose you could say with a leg and a half he, he had major influence in the game. He set up the goal and he kicked two great points. And he just seemed to get himself into space all the time. You know, he played very clever. Uh, and, and I suppose I'd have to say, today, after we got the goal today, I thought like the biggest thing was, I thought the full back line were absolutely outstanding. I mean, Eamon Callaghan and Philip Murphy and Bat, but Eamon in particular and, and Bab in the second half, they had absolutely outstanding games. And bad that chance to have that, that when they came off the post, they never looked like they were going to break down that defence today. Yeah. I, I've met nobody that didn't think Eamon was the man of the match by a mile today. Where, did you have any other contenders for, for the award? No, I, I suppose I would have said the next man, Tim, was the man playing alongside him in Bab. I thought Bab had an outstanding game. I thought in the first half he read, he read the game really well. He got in vital flicks and tips and, and kept the ball away. Uh, he had a brilliant second half as well. But I, I suppose overall you'd have to say him and Callaghan was absolutely outstanding today. He didn't put a foot wrong. I, I must ask Gary there, can we get the camera on Joe Mahoney above there for, uh, for a second there? Joe is... Uh, full back uh, on the 87 and 89 team and he's above there we don't see him too often around the place now he's uh, in exile above in Dublin but uh, he's above there with another one of our, our legends of the game Decky Mahoney we'd love to get Jor down here for one minute Jor do you think there's any way we could get him down for a minute Jor 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 there was a a famous cat cry of Joe Carroll's when the in the heat of battle used to be everybody mark your own man and George's man as well. Can you can you would you would you deny you <laughs> would you deny that the, the those rumours, Joe? I never I never I never say that now publicly, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Good man, Joe. Thanks a minute. We have Rock Chapel keeper here passing Tony Collins. Tony. I see you got nice uh, tops there for the county final. Okay. I, must, I, I, I must surely lay my hands on one of them before the night is out. There should, there'll be about four or five of them thrown up in the, the seats over in Paddy's. Um, Tony, your thoughts on that? Uh, it was a, a hard struggle. We got the break, so we got uh, a fortunate goal, I think, and they probably didn't get there when they hit the crossbar. But uh, Was it the crossbar it hit? When, uh, and, and it hit the crossbar on the way across then? Yeah, and uh, the the corner forward was a killer. He didn't have a chance to, to react to it. I don't think he expected it, did he? No, none of us expected it. <laughs> yeah, um, the the it's been generally acknowledged that the three boys outside you were, were all in the zone today. The full back line. Yeah, the full back line was outstanding. I think Emin Callahan in particular was man of the match by a long ways. But uh, uh, it takes 15, 16, 17 players. Like I think William Murphy coming on there changed the game really. You know, he's worked hard for the last eight weeks since he did his media ligaments, and it's great for him anyway. Were you uh, trying to keep kickouts away from James White during the game, or were you just banging him out there? Oh, the plan was to keep him away from him, all right, because he's, uh, he's a great, outstanding player. So the uh, plan was to keep him away from wherever he was. Yeah, he was definitely their best player out there again today. Yeah, uh, super player. But uh, they're a great team, and we just got the breaks on the day. Yeah, try to make there be a few points heading in... Uh, Tony Collins' bar, your namesake tonight, the team sponsors. There will, uh, it's, he's a great man to sponsor the team, and I suppose he deserves it, so we'll do our bit for him, Mike. Like. Well, thanks very much. Come over here, to, uh, Dan Cahill, the, fa the, father, the father of wing back there, and, and Joe Cahill, who was centre back the last time Rock Chapel won the Doha Championship. Yeah. Dan, um, that was a tough battle today. That was a tough battle today, all right. Were you a bit worried when Brendan went on the yellow? I was very worried, <laughs> but I thought he would be a deaf. He, he's capable of the odd old kamikaze tackling and stuff. Well, right. he's like, yeah, <laughs> set me anyway. he, he gets that from the he gets that from the max. <laughs> no, I'm delighted to be joined here with uh, our star forward there, <laughs> man in the match there in the Duhalla final and indeed against uh, against in the semi final against Linbor. Seamus, and uh, just checking there, you finished your day with a goal and two points. Yeah, but, bad, I suppose. But uh, that goal was instrumental. Oh, it was. Was lucky. Like I mean. We needed a bit of luck to the end. I said when I was going for the goal, I was going to give enough power, and I just got the rebound. It was a bit of luck, you know. 
Did, did the keeper save it and uh, she come back to her? I think he came off the keeper and off uh, the defender again. Like was, yeah, there was enough power in it to get it through. And yeah, good. I'll tell you, we were we were fairly relieved to see it going in ourselves. Um, you won a power ball there, and I'll tell you, you were you were coming in for some plenty of uh, attention. Like yeah. they're, they're sticky backs. They are. Uh, number three is very good. Um, he's Kevin I can't. Barrett. Kevin Barrett. He's very good. Very very pacey, like you know. Yeah. And uh, even their two their two cornerbacks are good as well, and they, they work well as a unit. You know, was. As I said, we just got that bit of a break today, what we needed. Like. Yeah, because like, even the last day and today, like, it is one thing to come out and win a ball in front of their backs, but yeah, getting past them is, uh, is the different yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Williams', Williams uh, contribution there was... Yeah, was, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing it again, really. I mean, his pace is... I mean, you can't mark it. Like, he's everywhere, you know. He walks hard back then as well, you know. But uh, he's, uh, he got two points as well. They were they were good scores and all. We needed them. Although the second point there, I thought it was worth to mention. It was uh, Willem's second point. It was DJ Bond must have pushed a ball across the pitch there to, yeah, to Willem okay, unmarked. Won, if, yeah. About 40 yards, absolutely pinged it into his hands. Like it was the pass of the day, yeah, I thought. Oh, it was great. It was a great pass, yeah. But uh, <laughs> Because uh, two... <laughs> I just... Uh, they say... I heard before that you're the pat in the back away from the kick in there, so I got the pat in the back today. The next oh, day, oh. day you'll be the kick in there. We'll have the boots polished for that as well. Thanks a million, Seamus. Come in. Is your camera even rolling? <laughs> <laughs>
special place deep in my heart And I know it will travel all over this earth I'll always return to the place of my birth I'm proud to say that this is my home To live with the people that I've always known Here in this place where I've always belonged I'm proud to say this is my home I'm proud to say that this is my home To live with the people that I've always known Here in this place where I've always belonged I'm proud to say this is my home I'm proud to say that this is my home to live with the people that I've always known Here in this place where I've always belonged I'm proud to say this is my town made my way I met with a young man on the road I did go and he told me the news of the death of John Joe John Joe Riley has left us behind he was called by the Lord to the faithful and kind he called him to heaven, a proud land to show. A true son of Breffney was the gallant John Joe. Brave Clan O'Reilly, proud is your name. You've raised many sons of great honour and fame. But not even the princess of long, long ago. Or compare with our sportsman, the gallant John Joe. He led Cavan to victory on that memorable day. In the final against Kerry in New York, far away. The next year in Croke Park, when our boys beat Mayo So once again they were led by the gallant John Joe His record's a proud one without blemish or stain He played his first football with the fame current of fame Now he lies in his cold grave where the wild flowers grow a true son of Breffney was the gallant John Joe At each corner of Breffney there's sorrow and pain Such a true-hearted sportsman we'll ne'er see again Young players may come and old players Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls We'd like you all to give a warm welcome to our victorious Cork County Champions 2012 and their captain Kevin Collins. <laughs>
Staley, who's going to present our victorious team.
and also a huge thank you to Paddy O'Connell and to Mixie and Roy for all that they do. I'd also like to call on Tom Doody, the trainer of the team, to say a few words, please. Would Dean and Kevin like to join him? Steiner and also to Betty 
Mary, Breeder and Kathleen for all their help this evening in serving the meal for the players and also to the Community Centre Committee for the use of the hall. <laughs> Heartfelt thanks to our main sponsor Paddy Mollies for funding the meal for the players this evening and for the continued support of our club and indeed to all sponsors who contributed and to all of our club in the run-up to the county final. Thank you. One man who has been with us through thick and thin has been Father Strict. And would you like to say a few words?
and I'm working on the accent. <laughs> okay, just a final few thank yous. Um, we'd like to thank all the hardworking members of our club and the wider community of Rock Chapel for their continued support. Thanks to our supporters, and I think it's kind of overwhelming how many people have come, um, come in here this evening to show their support for the club. I'd also like to mention many of those who are in many faraway destinations in Australia, in America, in the UK, and some of which you've travelled home um, for this county final. Those who continue to support the, the green and white while far away. We'd also like to take this opportunity to remember um, our deceased members, players and officers who unfortunately could not be with us today. We'd also like to thank all of the businesses who placed adverts in the county final programmes and also to the people of our community and further afield who contributed so generously towards the training fund which allowed our trainers to be very well prepared for the final. <laughs> we also encourage you to support these local businesses in these difficult economic times. Um, I'd also like to thank those who support our weekly lotto and for our ticket sellers and also to the lotto committee for their excellent work and commitment. Um, just on a final note, um, all, all the players are available here this evening. Um, if anyone wants to get their pictures taken with them, maybe some of the children would like to, or maybe some adults too. Um, and also, just to let people know that, um, and the players as well, that they will be meeting at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning to make, yeah, to make a journey to the national schools um, here locally. Um, so just. On a final note, once more could you show your appreciation for our trainer, selectors and county champions 2012. I suppose now just to start off the celebrations, we'd like to find the stretch to sing a song.
Christian is also. I tell you. Uh, Dr. Shreeman standing beside here with um, Pat Curtin, Jim Mahoney and Shawnee Pickett who were the affectionately known as the three wise men 25 years ago. Din, you proved today you're still a wise man. Jeff, the old memory is not as good. Uh, I don't know about the memory but there was no slip ups made on the line today. Um, I'll start there, Pat you were the trainer 25 years ago, does this bring back some good memories? Ah sure, absolutely brilliant yeah. Um, big battle in hands today and I think they really came up trumps and I think as I said all evening since they won it I think the boys in the line really came up trumps because they made great moves they had vital times and um, you know I mean at half time they should probably even up maybe another two or three points and they had a big battle in their hands and they really proved in the second half that they were the better team as I said the boys in the line made great moves at the right at the right times they did and um, bringing on Willem today in particular Shawnee what did you 
What are your thoughts on when they brought on Willem today? Were you thinking it was a, a risk or, or the right move? I suppose it was a risk to Willems. Um, we'll say his regards his fitness and all that and so forth. But at the end of the day, I suppose everybody knows that it was um, a swung the game and knocked up his favour. When, when it was hotly in the balance, the game was really in the balance at that stage. Well, as if I remember, the, the, I think uh, were they after taking taking the lead, were they going to point up, I think, when uh, when Willem came on, I think. Um, Din, how many years were you gone into retirement? They would never accuse you. I'd say you must have been gone a good ten years in here. But you were coaxed. Din was coaxed back into into the, the the thinking game this year, and by God, Din, there was no bad mistakes made there. No unfairness. Um, Pat, what what uh, players did uh, did you think came to the fore there today? Well, sure, I bought the first man, and it was him, not Callan. I thought the man was brilliant all through. And the same the last day, I, and he's been playing very well all the year, but I really think, I don't think there was a man of the match today. I asked well, who won, someone said there wasn't, but I mean, in my, for my money, he was by far, the, by far the best player there today. I thought he was outstanding. No, there was other players, of course, because it was a 15-man game, or an 18-man game, or only played. And um, I thought Dinger, Callum had a very good game in the second half. John Doody chipped in as well down the middle of the field. Uh, all the backs were starting, particularly the full-back term were absolutely brilliant. And uh, up front, I think the Fabers got it together. Uh, Seamus, I thought it was a great move putting Seamus in full forward at the time. I thought he mightn't work. Got the full back for Kilmurray, was quite a good man, was a good man as well the last day. But I thought Seamus opened it up totally inside there and uh, played very well. Scored 1 1, could have scored more, Maybe, probably could have taken a few better options, but he, I thought the man was excellent today. Uh, as I say, William Murphy, when he came on, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now he's, he got two points, made the goal. But other than that, he upset the whole defence when he came in. I just thought they couldn't hand him, like, you know? Yeah. It was great to, to uh, see a share of the old faces back there today. Dickie Mahan, he was there, and Jor, John Murphy, um, fellas that, that we hadn't seen in a long time. Did you did you get to meet any of them, Sean? Yeah, I did. I met, I met all the lads. I mean, they're, they're great supporters of the club and, and the teams down through the years. So it was great for them as well. Like, we'd say, travelling distances down from Dublin and so forth, and... To have success, I suppose, is a, an added bonus to them. But um, you see, these people are they're always great supporters of the club. They always were, and they always will be, of course. Like, you know, so it's just great for those people as well. And as, as Catherine said earlier on, like, I met people there from England. I came home especially from England. And, you know, these, these, are, the, these are the true Rock Chapel people, really, I suppose. This guy I was even looking on Facebook, and there was messages, I'd say, within a half an hour of the match from... Uh, uh, Eamon Callan's sister in Saudi Arabia or in Dubai, should I say, and uh, Eamon's brother in Australia and from all over the world, there was Rock Chapel people sending messages. Then finally, um, next in line will possibly be Kinmair if uh, if uh, they get over the water for Champions come back, Thomas, which they probably will. Like, have you uh, any uh, sniffing around done for tactics yet? Have you, do you know anything about them? Not really. The only thing we want to be is fully fit because we will be tough enough to beat I think but to win it is a different thing they had 8 or 9 of the Kilmere district team they have the men up the middle so they are supposed to have two good forwards carry on the 21 player and Paul O'Connor who plays senior and we'll have to handle those but if we can hold the ball there across the middle and not to let it in and be fit enough and have stamina the same as we had today and hopefully we'll all click in the day and if we do we'll give them a game I hope that we're not beaten by too much if we do lose you know, just I, I, I think what happened today like didn't happen by accident, and I've been saying this for a while. I mean, and it was a bit like really win the all Ireland when they won it. I mean, this is an exceptionally committed club, and you have an exceptionally bunch of committed players. And I think you're an outstanding management team over them, and it, you, you need that if you're going to win. These things don't happen by accident, and I've been talking to Tom Cal a lot there during the year, and. I mean, he's telling me about what, like, the Ke- uh, uh, Kevin Collins and A.M. Lord Callum was up in Donegal at stages there this year, and Kevin Collins was in Dublin, and they were quite prepared to come down midweek. Play the that doesn't happen in other clubs, and that's the reason they don't win. I mean, this is a totally, absolutely, totally committed effort by both the management and the players and the club as well, and that's why they won, and that's why they deserve to win, and that's why they're there. Yeah, I've always said it about Rock Shepard, that they're always dependent on players living away from home like I mean if, if they didn't if they left the club we wouldn't be competitive like in the story you know 25 years ago you had Jor and Decky and Ant and Lord of Feathers and Cork and whatever um, then considering you haven't even started your homework yet, that's that's a, an impressive breakdown on Kinmere there anyway but that doesn't uh, that doesn't surprise me 
they're top of Division 2 in Kerry. We can't understand how they're playing junior football because by right, top of Division 2 should be playing intermediate. But Kerry always seem to have the doors open for to win competitions, but uh, we'll have to play them and handle them and beat them, hopefully. We'll, we'll have to give them a rattle anyway. That's brilliant, lads. Thanks a million. So I think we've uh, just about spoken to everybody and taken in what was a, a su another superb day in the history of uh, Rock Chapel GA Club. Um, very fitting, 25 years after we won our first under the management of the three boys we just spoke to there, that uh, we're going to be looking forward in four weeks' time now to uh, meeting the winners of Ken Mac Thomas from Waterford and Ken Mayer from Kerry in the first round of the Munster Junior Club Championship. And uh, tonight brings the end uh, an unbelievably exciting campaign of winning Duhalo and winning Cork County for the second time in the club's history and uh, we look forward to whatever the future may bring us for the rest of the year so we'll say the best of luck to everyone in the future.